Okay, then we're good. Let's go. Let's go. Can all right. Let's do this. No, listen. Let's talk about let's day, let's talk about day one. Okay. Surprises. What, what what was surprising to you? What happened today that said, "Whoa, what's happening?" So there's a there was a little nugget that surprised me the most, and it was Ty and Seke for a minute, like a quick minute, lined up at left tackle for just a drill. And it, I didn't even really see it tweeted out. And I put it in my observations. And it was interesting. And I think that this is something that we've been talking about for a while, right? Like, is Ty Sake going to be in here to challenge Deion Dawkins for that left tackle job? Is Ty Sake here to, to be the right tackle, which we saw in Embedded? But it was just a moment. Now, for the, for the duration of practice, all the team drills, everything like that, Deion Dawkins was there. Uh, Cody Ford got that those first team reps right off the bat. Uh, he was on the right side with uh, John Feliciano. Got the first reps at right guard. Bobby Johnson connection. So, yeah, we got our first look at things. But, listen, exciting day. Lots to talk about. But let's remember, pads go on Saturday. So I'm going to temper some of the, you know, uh, first Excitement. impressions. Yes, until then. So now – I see John Feliciano. That's one name I did not expect to be taking any first team reps. Did it surprise you to see him amongst the first team? No, because a, two things. Number one, Bobby Johnson has a, a background with John Feliciano. They were together in Oakland. So the familiarity there, uh, you always want a guy in your, like, on your unit that you have experience with. So that, that doesn't surprise me. You, you saw when Mitch Morse went down in OTAs, wasn't available. John Feliciano got those first reps at backup center. He's got position flex. They can put him in a bunch of different spots, and I think that's what they like about him. I still think Spencer Long is going to be in the mix, and I think that we're going to see back and forth, back and forth. They're going to be just shuffling those guys in there, and I still think that we can see Wyatt Teller line up on that right side. But I think one thing that what today showed me where, as a starting point is that I think this, this entire coaching staff is comfortable with Quinton Spain at one of those guard spots. He lined up on the left side, and he played that for the duration of camp uh, or of practice. When they were flipping things on the right side, Quinton Spain stayed in at the left guard. So it, it, seems, to, it seems to me that, that Bobby Johnson's Luciano connection is it's showing course right now, kind of like Vlad Dukas and Juan Castillo. Let's just hope those two parallels don't don't coincide. <laughs> we don't want that Castillo Dukas connection. So I'm hoping this connection is a lot better. Um, I do have a question on the tight end room. So Jason Kroon, surprising to me, getting first team reps. Were you surprised by that? No. Um, when if you go back to before he got hurt in OTAs, he was getting first team reps back then. So. <laughs> I'm not shocked. He has the most familiarity, and I know there's a lot of excitement around Dawson Knox, but he's still learning. He's still trying to figure this all out. Going from Ole Miss to the Bill or to the Bills in the NFL is a big jump, and then take into account that he wasn't a big he, a big part of the offense there. There wasn't a lot of expectations. Now Croft's out. There's not a lot of depth at the position, and there's expectations on him. I I think that they want to you know, put him in a situation where he can be successful and throwing him out there for all of the first team reps is I think a little bit unfair for him. Now, there's sometimes when you when there's there's an aura about a player. There's an aura when you walk into a room and there's someone that stands out. Was there were there players that when you saw them you knew they belonged? Whether it was a, a veteran guy or a rookie guy. Was there someone that stood out to you just by their presence? Did they stand out to you? So I'll give you two names, one on each side of the ball. Number one, three, I'll give you three, one in each phase of the game. On offense, right. my, my big day one solidifying the number one receiver spot was John Brown. He looked comfortable out there. He, looked, uh, he was getting all the first team looks. And what was interesting is they were giving, when John Brown wasn't out there, they flipped in Robert Foster, which tells me, they're viewing John Brown as the starter and Robert Foster as the gadget guy. The, okay, we're going to run something down the field, which I think you can get yourself into some trouble with. I know Dable's creative, but, you know, if you're putting Robert Foster in the game every time when you're going to go down the field, it's going to get a little bit uh, 
it's going to get a little bit. It's telling. Exactly. Ex exactly. So I thought, okay, he went out there, two touchdown catches in red zone drills, uh, just absolutely smoked Tredavious White on the first touchdown, left him in the dust, and he was in the back of the end zone. Josh Allen just lofted it up to him. It was, it was beautiful. Um, again, no pads, so let's, let's stifle the, uh, the st talking about that. But uh, on the defensive side of the ball, EJ Gaines making a little bit of, uh, of noise with uh, the lone interception uh, for the first part of practice today. Uh, it was Kevin Johnson who was getting uh, all the interceptions during minicamp. EJ Gaines got one today. Uh, and then John Brown had the one uh, interception that he caused because it bobbled off of his hands. And uh, Micah Hyde, I believe, picked it off. Andre Roberts in the, in the return game. Man, this thing's quick. I think Bills fans are going to be super excited about what he brings to the return game. I'm trying to think. Has it been back since Roscoe Parrish, since the Bills had a, a return specialist that was really feared and dynamic? I mean, there might have been one since then, but I think that Andre Roberts is that guy, and I think he's going to contribute maybe even with some specific specialty offensive sets as well. I like that. Now, um, I, I want to talk about one topic because um, I don't want to keep you too long because, you know, you're going to have a big day tomorrow. Um, but looking at the the, the receiver room, I, I'm sure it's too soon. But the talk has been we all we all know who the 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 core four will be. But Mackenzie Williams Sills, did you see anything with those three? I think Sills, and I know that he's such a fan favorite and got and has such a great story. He's got a really uphill battle ahead of him uh, to really stand out. So does Duke Williams because I'll tell you right now, Ray Ray McLeod made a beautiful grab in the back of the end zone in uh, the warm-up drills, the seven-on-seven. Seven. I think that he's poised for a really, really nice uh, training camp and preseason to make it tough on the decision makers about who they're going to keep around. Isaiah McKenzie, I like to call him Mr. Reliable. But you could, you've seen the work that he's put in the offseason. He's putting it on his Instagram. He's putting it out there because it means something to him. Uh, I think that the – uh, you're starting to see the effects of that training play out. In, in, and he, he was good last year, man. People, people want to get on him a little bit for the drops, and, that's, and it's understandable. You've got to make plays. But he was a practice squad player that the Bills plucked from Denver, came in here, asked him to make plays, and he did make some plays last year. So I still think Isaiah McKenzie, if you're asking me, you can only keep one of the three. I think Isaiah McKenzie's that guy. And I also said – We'll give you another caveat to this. Keep an eye on Nick Easley. When you watch them warm up, and I can't wait for the next couple weeks to really dive into this, but he's like a Cole Beasley clone. They'll be walking in the warm-up line, and, and I'll have to do a double take to see which one's which because they move the same. They, they catch the same. Hey. So I think Nick Easley is another guy to keep an eye on. Okay. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys are tuning in right now, I'm talking to the guy, to my guy, Matt Perino with Buffalo Bills and why – up, uh, doing big things right now. You look enthusiastic. You look like you're excited. Uh, you, oh, look at that. You're putting the hand up. You're putting the hand seven, up. Seven, Rico, let me tell you this. My first year on the beat, seven months of off-season uh, looking ahead and pontificating and talking about what could be. I'm ready to see what is. You know what I mean? What I want to see what is happening out here. And what is happening out here today is, you know, football finally. The pads come out Saturday. Listen. If you want to see excitement, I'll hit you up at 9.45 on Saturday morning when the pads come on and Bobby Johnson has his hoodie on in 95-degree heat in Rochester, New York, sweating through his hoodie. That's when the real juices are going to be flowing. It's going to be exciting. I like it. So I'm, I'm going to hit you with two things now. This, I've been seeing a lot of people asking. Now, I've, I've, I saw it written that first team – to the defensive line, we saw Ed Oliver getting second-team reps. Jordan Phillips seems to be the guy that I've always known since last year that he was going to make a lot of noise this year, but he seems to be solidifying himself in that first-team uh, first team reps. Like, tell me more about what's going on with that, that defensive line. So before practice even started, Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean had their press conference, and an Ed Oliver question came up, and what Sean McDermott said at the end of of his comment on Oliver really stood out to me. He said, he's still a rookie, that's how he let it off. And then he ended with, 
he's still far away from where he needs to be. And he said it kind of in a very demonstrative way, which tells me they're happy and confident with what they have in Star and Jordan. Harrison Phillips is still developing. And Ed Oliver, for as good as he was at the college level and as pro-ready as I think that he believed he was at Houston, there's levels to this game. And you get to this level, and they're asking him as an undersized guy, you got to figure out a way to use your skill set at this level. You look at Zay Jones. Look at his senior season at East Carolina. He was a beast catching everything yep. thrown his way, touchdown passes, you know, converting first downs. He gets to the league, flop city as a rookie, right? And it's a slow progression. And finally, we're going into th year three, and people like me are talking about potentially attacking 1,000 yards for the kid. And I think he has that in him and that ability remains to be seen. But I think it's going to be a, a slow grind for Ed Oliver. And I think that that's okay because luckily for him, he landed on one of the top defenses in the NFL. Now, I would be remiss if I did not mention this because I, I, it, there, you hit a soft spot with me today. And I have to bring it up because I know you're going to be just as excited. Today you had an opportunity to see the fans interact with Josh Allen, the quarterback. And we had a young one that was so awestruck that he couldn't even speak, and there was quite a story about that. How was it talking to that young fan, talking to Josh Allen today, and just was lost for words? Yeah, I was so excited. It's like one of those rare times, right, where you get to be in the right place at the right time. Josh Allen signed autographs for probably what ended up being 40 minutes, and I was only at that line there for maybe five minutes, maybe six or seven minutes, because I'm doing a bunch of stuff. I'm writing stories. Well, it just so happened that I walked up on him while he was doing this interview, and I was going to take a picture, but I just slid it to video because I knew he was going to be doing some stuff with the fans. So I started the video, and then that happened. And the backstory of it is amazing. If you go back to the Miami game last year, this kid was sitting front row. He went to the game. He met some people that had season tickets uh, front row, um, right on the field. They let them – two people didn't go with them, so they let him sit in their seat. And Josh Allen, after he scored the 30-yard touchdown, walked over to the kid, gave him the ball. So that picture is on Getty. You could see it anywhere. He shared it. And so he got this ball in the game last year. He was so hyped. He came to training camp with the sole mission of getting that ball signed by Josh Allen. So Josh Allen signed the ball. It was a real emotional moment. He asked Josh Allen for a picture, and Josh Allen didn't, didn't hear him or didn't see it, and he was getting grabbed by other kids. So this kid thought that he wasn't getting this picture with him, so he started crying a little bit, held back the tears. Josh Allen made his way back, took the kid's phone, snapped the picture. Listen, you can say what you want about this guy in sports, fans and media we all get so hyped up about the game and the developing and getting paid all this money and producing we're all people man and i think that like sometimes it's good to see the person and i think somebody even said they tweeted on my response and they said my cousin just met brooks lopez from the nba last week at disneyland and he walked up and he was like hey man what's up i'm a big fan can i get a picture and he's like i don't do pictures and so, like, you see a guy like Josh Allen, who's a quarterback, can't go anywhere in Buffalo and probably a lot of parts of California and other cities without getting noticed, and he's still kind of putting on for the fans. And you know what? As a sports fan, as a journalist, respect, man, because that's not always the case. It's not always the case. And that's I brought this up because I made a comment uh, on Twitter, and I said, I don't know, but I think, I think it was on my IG, on YouTube Live, I think... Josh Allen might be more, the most popular Buffalo Bills person in Buffalo. I, I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen this much buzz around a person. Now, I wasn't back in the day when Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, and those guys were there, and I know these guys were king of the town, but Josh Allen seems to be the celebrity of Buffalo. Would you agree with that? 100%. And Jim Kelly was, in his day, he wasn't the same kind of celebrity because I don't think he was – as engaging with the fan base when he was a player he was like a badass dude like you remember those that poster with him and bruce and andre like they had the guns and stuff and they were like the k-gun squad like they kind of like they lived that life they were badasses josh allen's kind of wholesome a little bit like he's like you know he's the guy that you bring home to mom you know to like 
you know, say, look at my boyfriend. Like, he's like that dude. So, like, he's got that whole vibe going. And, and listen, it's working for him. It's working for him both on the field and off the field because you can say what you want about his first season, and there's a lot of haters out there. And, you know, I like to come at this from an obje objective viewpoint at this stage in my career. And I can tell you objectively that I saw enough in that rookie season after watching 20 years of horrendous quarterback play that there was enough there to be confident about the prospects of going forward. So that's where we're at. I love hearing that. Listen, I'm not keeping you too long. Uh, are you good? Are we, can we go for a couple more minutes and you're good with that? Uh, yeah, sure. A couple more minutes. Let's do couple, it. A couple more minutes and we're out of here. So um, right now you guys are at camp. You guys are dealing with a whole bunch of stuff right now. Where they have you staying? Are you staying in a little dorm room or what's what's happening? Where they got you? Where they got you cooped up? Yeah, man, you you would have seen it last year because I actually did my live videos from the dorm room over at St. John Fisher. This year, I got a backdrop, I got some lighting, so you won't actually see the uh, decrepit nature of my uh, dorm room. But no, it's a, it's a good time. It's like a nice environment. There's only eleven days this year because we're going up to Carolina for the week for the two practices there and the preseason game. Uh, and it's just a cool environment. You're like, you're around the team, you're around the, friend, the organization, you're around the people. And it's good to be out here with media folks. Uh, I've gotten a chance to get to know Marcel uh, Louis Jacques, the new ESPN yes. writer. Awesome dude. Honestly, if you guys aren't following him, give him a follow. Uh, really bright guy and somebody that I already can tell in just two days getting the chance to talk to him. He's going to bring such a new dimension to the beat. And I'm so excited about it. Uh, because, you know, I was that guy last year, like new to the beat, new to the, the journalism media world here. And, you know, you want to make a mark and leave a mark. And I feel like this guy's going to do that. So it's exciting. There's a lot of talent in Buffalo media. Not only Buffalo media, there's a ton of talent in the Buffalo blogosphere, which I know it's called and I know it's a very controversial thing. But listen, I want to give you guys a shout out. I want to give you a shout out. I love what you're doing. I love Buffalo fanatics. I love all the all these different, Bill's Mafia, everything, because the point of all of this and why all of us are on social media and why you are on social media is it's about building this community and it's about the conversation. And I think that you guys do a good job of building that conversation. Absolutely, it's networking, man. Listen, I'm not gonna keep you much longer, my man. You have things to do, you got places to be. Let's do this again in the next couple of days. Maybe I might hit you up again tomorrow because people want to know, Whenever. they want to know what's happening. Let's you just do send, it, listen, you listen, listen send you send me a text, hit, you, you put the bat signal in the air, and Batman will be there. I'm not Batman, yes. so I don't know if that's going to help you out, but give me a signal. I'll be there. I, I got you. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Perino from Buffalo Bills NY. Oh, hit the man up on Twitter. <laughs> yes, I got you. Hit Thanks the man up on Twitter. Hit him up on all social media platforms. Matt, you're the man. Let's do this again. Listen, have a good night. Set I'm yourself good, up man. for tomorrow. I'm going to hit you up. Bat signal's going up. There it is. Good night, everyone. All right, my guy.